I went out to the farmer's market and then um, down by, by the river, the Willamette, briefly this morning before we came on air. And I saw two different, I observed two different vignettes. In one, uh, a mom, a, you know, hip, attractive, thin, youngish mom is walking down the street with a stroller. At some point, she turns towards the coffee shop that I'm sitting outside of, and I can see um, that inside the stroller is a child um, that is way too old and way too big for the stroller, like actually having to hunch down uh, in order to fit in. And also, the awning of the stroller is pulled all the way up so that this child can't see out. And at you know 9 a.m. on an October morning, granted a blue sky morning, uh, the idea that you need protection from the sun is um, absurd. And furthermore, this child had on um, leggings over which on each of her knees were two giant bandages. And I thought, this child is definitely protected from a lot of stuff. Uh, but why is this child who is, yeah, I, I couldn't tell, maybe, you know, maybe three and a half, four years old, not walking? Why do they think their knees are so hurt, even though they're not walking, that they need bandages on the outside of their of of their leggings? And uh, it just it puts it puts the lie to so much of what modern parenting is doing. You know, these sort of these the health advice like bandage it, it needs to be covered uh, when the bandage in this case is entirely a fashion statement. And so I think we need we all need to be wary of. Uh, advice that comes to us that is worn on the outside as a symbol, as a fashion statement, and question whether or not that's the thing that we're getting from it. Sort of a tribal affiliation, a star ability snitch versus snitches without indicator, as opposed to uh, actually helping your child become more amazing and anti-fragile with every day that they're alive. In contrast, I was then um, in an area where they had some of these uh, artificial rock structures. Actually, sort of looks like columnar basalt, but you know, pretty high. Like the tallest one of these is 12, 14 feet. Yeah. And I walked by, and there was a young family uh, with two young children. Uh, young children, I would say, two and a half or three, younger than the child in the stroller. One of whom was on top of one of these of one of these fake stone sort of columnar basalt structures. And I just stopped and, and marveled and thought, that child is at some risk. So and that child is going to be just fine. That child we, is exploring. Yeah. Do we need to describe what these things are for people to get the idea? Go for it. Um, these, uh, they're actually fairly common in, in uh, this part of the world as a result of some very uh, ancient lava flows. You're talking not about the play structures, but what columnar basalt looks like. Right. And so the idea is these are these uh, giant columns that you may have seen. I think they're octagonal. Is that right? I don't remember. Anyway, they always form. It, look, yeah, I, I think it's octagonal, but it may be hexagonal. It, is it really always the same? Yes. Oh. It is. And it has I to do, it's like a giant crystalline structure. It has to do with the way the stuff cools. But anyway, these giant columns are basically like natural pillars. Anyone in California probably has sort of devil's post pile. Right. Devil's post pile are, the, are mini versions of them. Yeah. Here, they're 10 times the diameter yeah. and, you know, people sometimes have them. The play structure is artificial? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes people have them in gardens here and... Yeah. Now, these, this is... I, I don't know what the, the these fake... I don't know what it's made of, but it looks like it's evocative of this columnar basalt. But it, you know, it's one of these, it's a, basically a small climbing wall for children. And you know, our children used to play on them. I mean, in fact, still do. And it, you know, it's not easy to get up there. Mm -mm. Um, and I, um, I have reason to understand that the, one of the parents helped the child get up and, um, and, you know, and, may, and maybe also helped them get down a little bit because you have know, a very small child on top of a very tall thing. But, um, you know, a grin as wide as his or her face, I don't even know what the sex of the child was, nor does it matter. You know, this, this was a child exploring his or her own limits and space and, you know, had a vista from up there that was wider than anything that he or she could otherwise have seen. And 
It was extraordinary. And that child is going to go to bed tonight with a brain full of experiences and a body full of experiences that then is going to send him or her into dream world such that he's going to wake up tomorrow a stronger and more anti-fragile and more wise being, unlike the um, the totally protected in Band-Aids and stroller child. So I would point out one of the things, it's not the only thing involved in the experience, one of the things likely involved is that there's a certain amount of fear in ascending such a thing and, you know, leaping off it or whatever Mm -hmm. one does, which is going to be, um, a uh, hormonally distributed around the body. B it is going to cause the experience to be reviewed by the mind later on for value. And so in some sense, the, you know, the protection from the world is also kind of like a, cognitive anesthetic right Mm. it it, things don't rise to the level of needing much review and i I would point out uh, i had an experience i think you may have had an experience like this too as a kid i had an experience climbing on a uh, it was a kind of monkey bars but they weren't standard monkey bars they were uh a a part of they were an an arc Mm -hmm. Um, and the park in question actually had them overlaying each other. So there were three of them, which meant that if you fell from the upper one, you hit the lower one. Mm. And I hit my head and I got a concussion, which I believe is the reason that I'm not good at all the things I'm not good at. You think that was it? I think that, that was, was the it. moment. Well, I'm pretty, let's put it this way. Most of what I'm not good at comes after that point. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, uh, <laughs> You're pleased with yourself. A little. But anyway, the, the point is, look, that's not it's not perfectly safe. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not perfectly safe. And the not perfectly safe, as you and I keep making the point, the not perfectly safe is, is a feature, not a bug. The trick in parenting is to allow the degree of unsafety to be manageable by the kid at all times. So it, it, basically their experience of life should get less and less safe as they get better and better at dealing with risk. Indeed. Yes. Um, yeah, I had, I definitely, I got a concussion at a playground as a child. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly that. I was hanging from um, with the rings by my knees mm-hmm. uh, and I, I let go for reasons that I've now lost a concussion or time or something and I landed on my head. Yes. yes. I, I have, I have a feeling that this is also the reason that you're not good at the things that you're not good at, which is no a doubt. smaller list. I think you may have hit your head less badly. Um, you know, it's a smaller list so far as you can see, perhaps. Right. Yeah, I just do a better <laughs> job of covering. Could be. Yeah. I should point out my, yes. uh, at the point that I hit my head and got my concussion, I found out how lawyers work um, because my that's dad- That's when you found out how lawyers work. That's when I okay. found- So yeah, how my, old were you, do you think? Eight. Okay. Something like that. Fair enough. So um, how, how do lawyers work? Uh, lawyers uh, are the scariest animal in the jungle mm. and they get- yeah, On the jungle gym. <laughs> on the jungle gym yes. and every other- Yes. Yeah, so my dad got the city- Your dad who is a lawyer. He is a, yes. a lawyer and even worse, he's a litigator. So mm. that's really scary. Anyway- yes. He uh, got the city to reposition those very place structures so that a child falling from one, which is okay, didn't hit another. Which would have is a long not straight a, fall. Right. Instead st- of would one would fall in which the- into the wood. I'm not sure wood chips had been invented at the time, but if wood chips had been invented, one would fall into them rather than onto the metal place structure below. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, um, sometimes lawyers are on your team. That's yes, when things, you are, want them. things are good. That's, that's, you want them. You want to keep lawyers where you can see them. <laughs> on your team. Absolutely. 